You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. So we're next going to be talking all about the Transport Trust, uh, all part of our visit to Muswell uh, Manor today. Um, firstly, I'd like to say thank you very much for, uh, for coming along and hoping you could interview introduce yourself to our listeners. Certainly I'm Stuart Wilkinson and I'm the chairman of the Transport Trust. Um, I've been the chairman now for uh, six or seven years. Transport Trust though has been around for nearly 50 years and we're the only organisation in the UK which is interested in the preservation of all forms of transport, whether they're in the air, on the ground, on water or on rails. Now today is an unveiling of, uh, of a plaque. I was hoping you could tell our listeners a little bit more behind that and what sort of role that plaque plays um, you know, countrywide. Uh, yes, part of our remit is to improve um, the understanding of our transport heritage. And so what our red plaques do is mark sites which have some transport heritage historical significance. Um, for instance, um, this is where the first uh, powered flight took place in the UK, so that's obviously very significant. We have plaques as far down as um, Land's End and as far north as Scotland. And we have, this is number 63, I think, in the last four years, and each one marks a site of significance in terms of the development of our transport heritage over the years. So these plaques are a new thing or are they something that's existed a long time and it's just been the right time to have one here? Well we started four years ago and we tried to draw up our our hundred best sites as it were and uh, we're slowly working through them. Some sites take longer than others particularly with listed buildings um, and so it does it does take um, it takes quite a while to get them organised. Now, where we can, we tie in with an anniversary or a particular celebration. Um, and uh, this one we're doing now because we've got to it now. Is there anything else you'd like to, uh, to cover or tell our listeners about? Well, the Transport Trust um, has quite a lot of members, several hundred members, and those members get a magazine every quarter. Um, and they, uh, we put on visits for magazine for for members um, to all sorts of uh, different uh, transport related places throughout the year um, and we also make awards uh, cash awards to help people finish restoration projects uh, and to mark particular uh, make personal awards to mark particular achievements so that's what we do and you can find us on www.transporttrust.com well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time out to talk to us. Not at all. My pleasure. So we are out and about at Muswell uh, Manor. We're going to be talking to a series of people here as part of their uh, unveiling ceremony. And uh, we're joined with uh, a relative of the Short Brothers. So uh, thank you very much, firstly, for taking the time out to speak to us. Thank you. Well, I was wondering, firstly, if you could uh, introduce yourself and tell us your sort of um, relationship as a relative. My great-great-grandfather, um, John Short, was the eldest brother of their father. There were uh, seven brothers who were all apprenticed to Robert Stevenson and served their indentures and then all went off to be mainly mining engineers. Samuel was um, Horace Eustace and Oswald's father, was the second youngest of the brothers and Horace, Eustace and Oswald grew up mainly in, well they settled in near Derby and their father died when they were quite young and left them in, in straitened circumstances. Horace had a series of adventures where he went off to Australia to visit uh, an uncle, ended up in a Mexico mine where he was the manager of the silver, a silver mine and Eustace and Oswald moved to Battersea and with, with money that Horace supplied them with set up a coal merchant's yard but their interest was hot air balloons so gradually um, they realised in fact they, they sold um, 
quite a few hot air balloons to the Indian Army working in Battersea and they soon realised that lighter than air machines was the way forward and they set up here at Musulmana uh, the first world um, aircraft factory. They had met the Wright brothers in um, France. Horace had rejoined them. Horace wrote down the plan of a Wright flyer on the back of a cigarette packet from instructions from one of the Wright brothers came back and that they found this area because the Wright brothers wanted somewhere quiet uh, out of the way and secretive and they set about uh, building Wright flyers under license to the Wright brothers who had come out here in 1909 to visit them. So my interest is in the Short brothers who were working class uh, very poor young men who had an absolute vision and were very instrumental in the promotion of early aviation. So it must be uh, a pretty nice thing to see it still being uh, celebrated and recognised. I think this place, um, Mus- Muswell Manor, is absolutely unique in the fact that they have cherished the um, the idea of where it all started and I don't think that uh, these pioneers get the recognition that they deserve. I mean the Short Brothers are not household names and yet the contribution that they made to aviation is absolutely enormous so it's events like this which help promote uh, an appreciation of their ingenuity, their pioneering spirit, and they're just fantastic people. So is this the first time you've been to Muswell Manor? No, um, we came to the 100-year celebration in 1909, which was um, a good big event, uh, which helped to put uh, Muswell Manor on the mar- on the uh, on the agenda and uh, from now on we're hoping that it's going to just spread well thank you uh, very much for talking to us that's a pleasure so we're now going to be talking to a representative of uh, charles rolls thank you very much for uh, speaking to us yeah my name is steve robson i'm uh, chairman of the charles rolls memorial trust i live in bournemouth just a few miles away from where charles rolls crashed his machine at the Bournemouth Centenary uh, uh, events in 1910. Um, Bournemouth decided to have an international aviation meeting and there were people like Blerio, Cody, an American called Armstrong Drexel and many others of the pioneers of flight in those times. Uh, I'm here today to celebrate uh, Shorts because Rolls was inextricably linked with Shorts. Rolls had um, learnt to fly in, in a balloon um, but he was also experimenting with gliders in the Albert Hall, along with uh, Mr. Brabazon. And uh, at the same time, the Wright brothers were developing their powered aircraft. Uh, eventually, uh, Rolls uh, met the Wrights. Uh, he, was, he was involved with Rolls-Royce cars and marketing the Rolls-Royce cars in America, and he met the Wright brothers there. He tried to get them to come to England, but in fact, uh, at that time, uh, they weren't ready to do so. But then the Wrights went to Le Mans in France, and that's really where the Wrights uh, took off, so to speak, um, with their Wright flyer in Europe. Rolls went to meet them. He also encouraged the Short brothers to go there. And in that process, Short brothers uh, agreed to uh, uh, take on a license to build the Wright flyers. And that was the start of the Short, Short's manufacturing empire uh, down here in, in Laysdown. Um, Rolls had bought a, fl- uh, a right flyer from, uh, um, from, the, from the brothers in uh, Le Mans but uh, it took a long time to get delivered and so he asked the Short brothers to build him a glider so he could learn to glide and then developed onto the aircraft itself when the Wrights eventually came to England it was natural for, Shorts to, uh, for Rolls to look after them and there's a famous picture showing him in a, a Rolls Royce car, Silver Ghost uh, with the Wright brothers down here at Muswell Manor. And so it's truly a, a cradle of aviation. If Rolls hadn't died at Bournemouth, 
we, we might even have seen a, a company called Rolls Short because he, he wanted to build aeroplanes and, and the Short brothers obviously uh, were the people to do that for him. So what other important things did you want to cover about Rolls? Okay. Uh, well, on this recognition day of the Short brothers, um, the Honourable Charles Stuart Rolls was intrinsically linked with them in those pioneering days of the early 20th century. Because Rolls died when he was 32 in 1910, his part in aviation tends to be overshadowed by the names of others such as Brabazon. Rolls had already shown his pioneering abilities in the development of automobilism and had established himself as a national icon and worthy competitor in road racing, a far more dangerous sport in the early 1900s compared to today. He had already flown in a balloon in September 1898, and this was three months after he had left Cambridge, rising from Crystal Palace to land in Epping Forest, a trip of 16 miles. Almost exactly three years later, in 1901, he flew again from Crystal Palace in the company of Miss Vera Butler, her father Frank Butler, and Stanley Spencer, all of whom were members of the Automobile Club. It was during this flight that the notion of an Aero Club was decided, and the Aero Club of Great Britain was formed later that year with a first flight under its all species in November at Stamford Bridge. The name changed to the Royal Aero Club in 1910. Ballooning was the great sport in 1901, but Rolls did not buy a balloon until 1906. He had found Eustace and old Oswald Short in his search for excellence, and they had some uh, a workshop in Tottenham Court Road. But Rolls suggested that they move to Battersea to be near the gasworks. Not daft as it sounds, because obviously the balloons in those days used gas from coal gas. But he bought a French balloon through, through the Shorts later that year. Then he commissioned his first balloon from Shorts, named Britannia, to be built for the first Gordon Bennett race in September of that year, in 1901. Uh, sorry, it's 1906 by then. All this in the same year that Rolls-Royce Limited was incorporated. But while the other balloonatics were hard at it, Rolls and Brabazon were experimenting with model gliders in the Albert Hall, which was near to Rolls' house. Across the Atlantic at this time, the Wright brothers were perfecting and flying their powered biplane. In March 1906, Rolls invited the Wrights to England, but they declined. In October that year, Rolls was in America, developing the Rolls-Royce business and managed to meet the Wrights in December. Two years on, in 1908, the Wright brothers were developing their European business at Le Mans, and Rolls had his first flight of four minutes, and was so smitten that he ordered a Wright flyer and suggested that the Short Brothers should meet the rights. Things now moved apace. The Short Brothers bought 400 acres at Shell Beach, which became the headquarters for the Aero Club, here at Muswell Manor. The Wright aircraft order was delayed, and Rolls had to learn on a Short Wright glider that he commissioned. And Shorts had attained their license to build Wright flyers, Rolls ordering two, and so the company established itself as the first to manufacture a production aircraft. Rolls visited Laysdown regularly during 1909, learning to fly on his glider, and when the Wrights visited England in May that year, it was only natural that he should host and transport them. The first short Wright was delivered in November, and Rolls flew a mile, reaching 60 feet, and earned an Aero Club prize of 30, 50 pounds in the process. Rolls was also first to land at Eastchurch when the shorts expanded. Plans were made for a Rolls-powered glider to be built, and RPG-4 is sometimes recorded as short number three. It was clear that Rolls had planned to set up in aircraft manufacturing, and he had been involved with government aviation at Farnborough. Certainly the amalgam of engineering and salesmanship that had worked so well for Rolls-Royce car would have worked well in aviation. Had it not been for that fateful 12th of July in 1910, we may have seen a Rolls short aviation empire. I was going to say, there's so much um, history to it, and this obviously plays uh, a big role in it here at uh, Laysdown. So uh, a day like this must be very important that it's still being remembered. Yes, well, I think the fact that I've driven over from Bournemouth this morning uh, is some idea of uh, the importance that I certainly uh, uh, connect it with. But I also have connections. Uh, My father worked for Shorts uh, at Rochester during the war on the Shorts Sunderland. Uh, My mother was a a Wren locally, uh, lived at Faversham. So um, I'm using this visit also to, uh, to see um, my origins, I suppose. <laughs> well, Lot, thank you very much for taking the time out to tell us a little bit about um, your background and, uh, and the history and um, your sort of role at the moment. Well, thank you very much for, for giving me the chance to speak and, uh, and mention Rolls, because Rolls is little known and uh, he, he did so much for the shorts and aviation in general. Thank you very much.
So we are continuing to talk to lots of different people here at Muswell Manor, all as part of the uh, unveiling of the red plaque. We're next going to be talking to the uh, new mayor. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you very much for them inviting me. I didn't realise this was this was here. I'll be honest on that. I knew the Short Brothers came from round this area, but not. Uh, not at Muswell Manor, so or Muscle Manor as it used to be called. So, so a nice one to uh, to visit as one of your early appointments. Um, no, we've had quite a few uh, since we was, took over a month ago. We've had nearly nearly thirty, I think it is. So busy. Yeah, we've been very busy. Yeah, well, it's coming up for thirty anyway. So, we've done some out out the uh, borough functions and civic functions and. Uh, things like that um um main one that we started with was at the um painted hall at greenwich right. the civic function there we were invited to and at the old royal naval college so, uh, that's a well worth place to go and have a look at it really is my wife and i enjoyed that well thank you very much for talking to us i hope that's been of help for you and yes no it has it has so we're next going to be talking to the uh, artist who um produced the um the statue that's outside muswell i manner but firstly um thank you very much for talking to us i was hoping you could uh, introduce yourself to our listeners uh, well i'm barbara street and uh made the, well I've, I've got long connections with lays down my grandfather bought the bungalow that we have as a holiday home from Mr Andrews who owned Muswell Manor and of course he he was here when the Short Brothers were here and I knew the history of the Short Brothers but I realised that lots of people here in Laysdown and on the Isle of Sheppey didn't know anything about them before the um, centenary and I just felt, because I do sculpture, that I'd like to put a statue here so that Laysdown is known for this wonderful history it has. And also the Short Brothers were very ordinary people and they didn't have um, the fame that people like Brabazon, Rolls, Wright Brothers, they, they just didn't have that. You know, people didn't know about them. And because they were just ordinary people and didn't have an awful lot of money while they were working down here, I just felt that they they should be known about. And they did such a lot for aviation history. And that's why I wanted to make a statue of the Short Brothers. Well, thank you very much for telling us all about it. OK. So we are continuing to talk to uh, lots of different people here at uh, Muswell Manor. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for, uh, for talking to us. I was hoping you could introduce yourself to our listeners firstly. Uh, I'm Jonathan Neem. Uh, I live in Faversham. I run Shepherd Neem, but I'm also a Deputy Lieutenant of Kent, so I'm here to represent the Lord Lieutenant uh, on this very important occasion today. Well, it must be uh, a nice occasion to come down and uh, be witness to. Uh, absolutely. I think it's a, it's a remarkable and fascinating story, this. Uh, it's a story that uh, is not as widely known as it should be. Uh, the role of the left- lieutenancy is to promote everything about Kent. Uh, and certainly from a tourism perspective, people may think Kent is all about tor- um, castles, cathedrals, etc. Um, but this story is genuinely unique. That is an overused word. Uh, and I hope that uh, this today's event can, can in some way give recognition to this incredibly important part of Kent. It, it's a remarkable environment, a uh, wonderful uh, place to be, both from a bird perspective, a tourism perspective. Uh, the beaches uh, are, are lovely, but also this very, very important part uh, of our county's history. I you hopefully things like this plaque will help people be aware of just the significance of a site like this. Yes, we were talking earlier. Um, this should be made into a film. Uh, this is an incredible story, and if people don't know about it, they should come down to Muswell Manor and find out about it. Uh, uh, it, it, it should attract uh, tourism, and I think... Uh, uh, the, the plaque today uh, is, is a recognition, but also I hope will raise awareness uh, for this incredibly important uh, piece of our history. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. Not at all. Thank you.